learn the first two rules of differentiation and these rules are basically for the single variable functions because there are some functions in which we have more than one variables so this is the case where there will be only one independent variable that will affect the dependent variable the two rules that we will study are constant function rule and the power function rule so let's get into the details of it these are various rules that we can use to differentiate various uh, functions and find their derivatives there are a few other functions as well for example in addition to the constant function rule and the power rule we have the sum difference rule we have product rule and we have quotient rule as the titles go this is a uh, sum rule and difference rule here we will see that how two functions when they are added are differentiated and two functions when they are subtracted they are differentiated so these are basically two separate rules but they are summed together because their method is the same then we have the product rule and in the product rule we have the differentiation of a function where two functions are being multiplied and when two functions are being divided the decorum of taking its derivative is explained in the quotient rule so let's focus on these two which will be covered in this video then we have the power rule and in this power rule we will uh, follow a certain method and you have noticed that we haven't discussed the constant function rule we will learn the power rule first and then try to apply it to understand the constant function rule and we will also understand its real life uh, understanding when we go ahead so let's start with the power rule and it says that if we have a power function because the variable is in the base and the power or the superscript is uh, a constant value a when we take its derivative the left hand side will turn into f bar x instead of fx this bar basically shows that we have taken its derivative and this right hand side has become this expression this expression has the power in the beginning and then its product with x that is the same variable that we uh, were trying to differentiate and a minus 1 is basically one deducted from its original power original power was a and we have deducted one from it in addition to this the third part is the derivative of this function while keeping the power 1 so if i keep its power 1 it will become x or x raised to the power 1 and if i take its derivative it will be d over dx of x which will be cancelled out and that expression will be cancelled out here uh, i have written that in detail if you focus on this part which is in blue basically this is the power which is written in the beginning and then one is subtracted from that power this is the second part that is power minus 1 and this is that part that we were trying to explain now it is fully evident that the derivative while keeping the power of x as 1 and you can see already that dx over dx will be cancelled out and will become 1 when multiplied with this expression will not affect this expression so this is why the final answer is like this so these three steps are basically required to do the derivative of a given function that follows a power rule because here the variable has a certain power let's do some further examples here again power rule is applicable because 1 over 100 will come outside as a coefficient and x will have a power of 100 as we have written here separately these two things and y bar means the derivative of the variable uh, y and the function fx and this 1 over 100 is kept outside while the power that is this power 100 comes in the beginning and then one deducted from the power and derivative while keeping the power of x as 1 
which will reduce to 1. Usually it reduces to 1, but it is not necessary that in all of the cases it will reduce to 1. This is why it is better to perform this step because if it is not equal to 1 then definitely there will be an inconsistency in our answer. So here we are, this is the uh, derivative of the function which was given here and it is this function. Here it was convenient that 100 will be, was cancelled out from these two places and the answer is simplified. A few other examples, well x raised to the power is minus 0.33, no matter it's a negative power, it is a power function and we have brought the power first, deducted 1 from the power and taken the derivative of x raised to the power 1 which becomes 1. So after simplification we get this answer. Here we have minus 3 as the power and minus 5 is appearing as a coefficient and it remains outside as a coefficient and we multiply we apply the power rule here and solve this. The power is minus 3 so it become uh, it comes here and then 1 subtracted from the power and derivative of r with respect to r where r is having 1 power at this time which is equal to 1. So the answer would be this and furthermore it's a symbolic situation and we have two functions in it. Uh, this is a constant function because b doesn't have variable p in it so it's a constant and this is coefficient and this is the variable p and it's its bar. So it is uh, a function that we will do in advance because it is a sum rule which is being applied here because in some rule there are two functions that are being added and if we consider this it's a constant so its derivative is equal to zero. This is known as the constant function rule that every constant when differentiated it becomes zero. So here you can see the uh, answer of uh, b is zero that is plus zero so we can see that there is no need to write plus zero here. Whereas this is solved because it contains the variable p which is the concerned variable. a remains as it is as a coefficient. Alpha comes in the beginning and 1 deducted from the power and then the derivative of this with respect to price and while keeping the power of p as 1. So that will again be equal to 1. So it doesn't appear here. But this is the answer of this function when we take its derivative. This is another example in which we have a square root in the denominator. We have shift shifted it over uh, to the numerator and it becomes minus 1 over 2. Reciprocalizing has reversed the sign of its power. It was 1 over 2 here and minus 1 over 2 in the numerator. Now we will apply the power function rule. A will come outside and here you can see it is outside just as a coefficient because there is no variable in it, so we bring it outside and when we take its derivative uh, power minus 1 over 2 first and then minus 1 from the power and the derivative of x with risk to the power 1 with respect to x. So that will be again equal to 1 as we have already seen in our previous steps. Then we can simplify this, you can do the simple algebra. This is the answer. Here we have broken down this minus 3 over 2 into x into square root of x in the reciprocalized form and in the denominator. So another example is solved. Here we know that a is a constant. When we take the co constant derivative it becomes uh, 0. This is the constant function rule. Uh, here another thing that was noticed is that we have a function and we have a constant in a, a uh, term that needs to be differentiated. Then we see that a is reducing to 0 because of the constant function rule where the constant derivative is 0 and f of x has a derivative as well. So 0 plus the derivative of f of x. In the same way if a is being multiplied with f of x, a comes outside without reducing to 0 because it is not a separate function. It's a coefficient of the function of x and the derivative of function of x. So here it is the uh, real life uh, and mathematical interpretation. As we have already seen that the derivative of a constant function rule is 0.
So here we can see the interpretation, the meaning that basically the derivative is the rate of change. And when we are trying to find out the rate of change, we need some change in the given value. When it comes to the rate of change of a constant, it means that does, that doesn't change. It means that a value that doesn't change will not have a change. And that means that the rate of change will also be equal to zero. So in order to have a rate of change, we should have a variable and not a constant that doesn't change. This is why the derivative of a constant, for example, here, a constant function, which is separated with this variable function, it will be equal to zero. So these were a few numerical and symbolic examples to understand the power rule and the constant function rule. And you can see we have done this uh, with a few examples as well. Now I will give you the uh, proof of why the constant function rule is uh, giving us an answer of zero. So here we are the proof of the fact that the constant function will give us a zero if we differentiate it. Here you see that we have assumed that the constant is two and we can write two like this because we are introducing the variable though with the power of zero. Now we apply the power rule on it. We have taken the derivative and you can see zero comes here because it's the first part of the formula of power rule and one deducted from the power and derivative with, while keeping the power one. This will reduce to one. This will become this and zero will be there. So finally, when this zero gets multiplied with all of these makes them zero. And when it gets multiplied with the outside two, it also makes it zero. So this is how we can prove the constant function rule with the help of power rule. This was about these two rules that are interconnected and are helpful in understanding these two basic rules of differentiation.